was stuck here. The cops won't bother me. Welcome back. I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the V-Strom. I see a lot of beginner riders getting this bike and all of a sudden, because of ADV bikes are getting so obese with the Africa Twins, the KTM Adventures and GSs, it seems like the V-Strom 650 is a noob bike or female bike, which is kind of weird because a lot of guys contact me about this bike and they want to buy it. And I ask them like, uh, what bike you got? And it's like, they usually have a GS, but they're buying it for their girlfriend or their wife. And it, it's kind of puzzling in a way because it is a physically large bike and you would think that perhaps it wouldn't make a great beginner bike. But it is a great beginner bike. The only thing that you have to overcome is the height of the bike. It is a tall bike and it's a, a very wide seat that makes it very comfortable. So you have a wide stance on the ground. So a lot of people can't flat foot this thing. Also, you have about 490 pounds. I think it's 470 pounds wet, I believe. But that doesn't really matter much because as a rider, you're going to be adding weight. So, you know, I have the Givy racks, I have the panniers, I have heated grips, I have an aftermarket windscreen. So all of these things contribute to the wet weight, but having a low weight is pretty important as a bike. But if you're a new rider and you're getting into this bike, there's so many inline fours, inline twos out. And the reason I think this makes a great beginner bike or new ADV type of rider bike is that the V-twin engine is an extremely streetable engine. It's not gonna make a lot of power it's not going to make a lot of top end speed it's not meant for that but the way it makes power it's very difficult to describe at any gear that you have that you ha you're riding it still has enough power to kind of get you through it uh, if it keeps pulling even though an inline four you have to like shift it it's got like these very certain parts in the RPMs that makes a whole lot more power. It's the same thing here, but not so much apparent. And it's a very linear sort of power. So if you're riding in the twisties and you're in the wrong gear, and you're in like fifth gear and you should have been in third, it doesn't really matter because even in fifth gear, it pulls pretty decently. You're not gonna win any races and V-twins have never been that competitive compared to inline fours. You know, I'll take an example, an RC51 versus an R1. It's just not that competitive. But if you rode that RC51, that big V-twin, it felt so good to ride in the streets because the power was always there. So a lot of it is not about how power looks on paper. The V-twin works really well. It works really well in the street. And a V-Shrum like this, it's been perfected. It's been for, the motor's been perfected since the SV650. It's the same engine, so if you've ridden SV650, it's a very similar feel. So a lot of people love this engine. And I never really understood V-Twins, but after riding this thing and riding it cross-country twice for months, this thing is just an incredible feat of engineering. People compare this engine to like a diamond. It is the best thing about this bike. It's not the looks. I don't think it looks great at all. Some people might disagree with me, but the engine is really what you get the V-Strom for. And I believe that the V-Strom makes a much better bike than a lot of bikes out there, like a KTM Adventure. Um, for street riding. I know it's a little bit different because the KTM Adventure is a badass bike, but if you have $4,000 to spend and you want to get gear, you can get one of these for $3,000 and have $1,000 left over for gear. And in the used market, of course, new, I believe they're like $10,000, $12,000, so they're getting up there in price. But this thing is just incredible. Like it's never failed to start. I'm always amazed how good of a bike it is to, to ride. It's, 
I've gotten used to bikes and almost kind of bored after a while, but this thing, as soon as I get on it, I am always happy to ride it. It's, an, it's just an amazing engine. And it sounds great, even though I have the stock exhaust on here, it still sounds fascinating. The V-twin engine is an intoxicating sound to a motorcycle rider. And if you get an inline thing two, just like a lot of bikes so these days have inline two, like the Yamaha Tenray, the NC700, uh, I believe the Versys, they all sound pretty wimpy. So you're getting this amazing feel on the street and you have a great sound and capability of this bike. So it is kind of tall, so beginner riders need to worry a little bit about that. But after a while, you get used to the tallness of the bikes. The tallness of the bikes benefits you a little bit more because you sit upright. When you sit on the bike, you're fully upright. It's very easy to turn your neck from left to right. So if you're using this as a commuter, this thing makes a perfect commuter. And I don't commute all that much anymore, but this thing just feels really good on the street. And since this bike has been on the market for such a long time, you could get all sorts of accessories made for this thing, or accessories bought for this thing. Panniers, bash plates, the uh, engine guards, everything is available for it because it's been out for so long. Another thing to note about the V-Strom is the fit and finish. I know that a lot of people say that Honda provides a great fit and finish. I actually don't find that to be the case so much. I believe that Suzuki is actually, this particular V-Strom, the fit and finish on this is incredibly high. When you get on this thing, everything feels really solid. It feels like a bike that you can keep for a lifetime. And I think that's one of the things that BMW GS owners like about their bikes, the fit and finish of it and the quality of the engineering feels great. It's the same thing with this, except you don't have that name brand. But Vishram, it's been around for such a long time um, that it's starting to get that same sort of loyal following. And another thing to note as a beginner is that when you're doing maintenance on this bike, first of all, this thing barely ever breaks down, and if it does, it's extremely cheap to repair. And all the things I've had to do were of my own fault, not of the bike, so it's never left me stranded. And parts for it are extremely cheap. You can get parts online. There's so many V-Stroms that were sold that these things just come everywhere. And you can go to Strom Troopers, uh, the for sale section. Sometimes guys are selling V-Stroms really cheap and advrider.com. You can find great deals on the uh, flea market section, but the way I found this bike was on Craigslist. And a lot of people, they just want to upgrade. But I actually think that a lot of bikes are less of an upgrade than this one, because this one is like that really nice middle spot, the 650. And you don't need a 1000, especially for ADV type of riding or commuting or even pleasure riding. It's almost a block for, for riding. This thing, as a new rider, <clears throat> also has a, a top speed of around 110 miles per hour. Now, I think it's a little bit over that, but I don't find myself going top speed a lot. I did go for two whole hours in the top speed on this thing, and it just fantastic. Um, it doesn't burn any oil, it just keeps on trucking, no issues. It also gets 60 miles to the gallon if you're being careful, but on a more spirited ride you could potentially see like 50. It's thrifty for a V-twin and V-twins are not really known to be drifty sort of bikes. The range on it is also about 250 miles and it's incredibly easy to fill up. There's no issue. You don't have to remove the lid, kind of like you have to do on the CB500, put it somewhere and then fill it. It's just on the hinge and you just pop it off. I just finished doing the head bearings on this and the fork seals. That seems to be one of the weak parts of this bike. I do wish that Suzuki would upgrade the suspension to upside down forks or something a little bit better because I've had to um, fix my fork seals twice, but I have done quite a bit of riding on this off-road 
and through Utah, Colorado, where it was kind of rocky, so I kind of think that was the reason. Um, the steering, the wide handlebars on this make it a very easy bike to ride. And I think that's one of the things that I admire about ADV bikes. When you get on an ADV bike, you are actually faster than a lot of sport bike riders. Not because you're a great rider and not because they're going slow. It's because this thing is easy to ride fast. I think it takes a more skilled rider to ride the sport bike fast because of the position of it and the way you sit on it, but this, you get on it from one bike to another. I could get on a KTM Adventure or Africa Twin, and you can ride those as just as well as this because the feeling is about the same. Now, the handlebar positions are gonna be different from bike to bike. If you like to stand up on your bike for off-road, and I don't really do it on this one, because when you stand up, the handlebars are a little bit too low and it makes you kind of crouch down a little bit and a proper dirt bike is a little bit higher up so you're standing up but I don't find I need to do that because I don't go over major rocks off-road this is perfectly suited for gravel roads light off-roading and I don't really consider it to be a dual sport what I like about this is that I can ride to Utah from DC and spend a thousand miles riding off-road, turn right back around and ride it back to DC without breaking down, completely wasting so much gas, being able to take luggage, even a passenger. I couldn't do that in a proper dirt bike, or at least I wouldn't be as comfortable as in this one. That is another really great thing about this bike, the comfort. With that stock seat, and I know a lot of people will switch the seats uh, to Corbin or Sargent or whatever, but I find that the stock seat is incredibly comfortable. It is extremely wide. When you look at bikes, uh, there's the Yamaha 700 I saw at the IMS show in DC. The seat is so much narrower because that's a little bit geared more towards dual sport and off-road riding. You want a narrow seat, but this thing, it's like a bench. It's a very large seat and I have ridden with a passenger for all the way from Salt Lake City to Utah, um, Salt Lake City to DC and there wasn't any complaints. But she was pretty small. Another thing that I don't like about this bike, if you're an advanced rider, I think it might be a stopping point because I don't like chains all that much. Because when you ride a lot, you're using up chains. Yeah, I could get a really expensive chain, but honestly, I would rather go on a trip and not switch out the chain. I've done like 15,000 miles on a trip, and chances are you're gonna be switching chains along the way. So I would much prefer a shaft drive that's very low maintenance than a chain. Even though like the chain is a much more efficient and reliable thing to have. If your chain breaks, you just put in another one. And that's what it did in my last trip. I had to put in a new chain and sprockets in Oklahoma. But I don't really, I don't like that too much. I would much rather have a shaft drive. Now, the type of riders that would get this in 2020 is you could get it in the used market and it's like the cheapskates, kind of like me. I want the most bargain for the buck. And that's who I can kind of consider myself. I want to be able to know I can get like a bike for $3,000, $4,000 and it being as reliable as any bike out there and that's what the V-Strom is for me. And also, it's the fact that it's not like the greatest bike in the world. It does everything well with not doing anything overly great. It's an incredibly good handling bike. You can ride this thing extremely well in the twisties. I can keep up with sport bikes. There's no issue at all. Like you would have to work really hard on a sport bike to lose me in the twisties. This thing handles it. It's that V-twin engine that's incredible. It's just a phenomenal engine that Suzuki did. They have issues, of course, like every bike has got issues, but the V-SRAM, I think it's uh, as close to a perfect street bike as you can get. It's 
a great budget bike. It does touring, it does commuting really well. It does light off-roading. And it's got a major off-the-market community. It also has a great community online. It's got Facebook groups everywhere. There's off-roading groups. And I like the ability of um, taking a bike that's not really meant for off-road and making that my off-roading bike. It's a great bike. You can't go wrong. It's a good money well spent with this thing. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.